What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to briefly show you how I ink my drawings. Now after your sketching phase, you're solidifying the lines that you like and preparing yourself for the coloring stage. Now coloring I'm not going to do in this video, however if you do want to know what I do in terms of adding color to an illustration, I got a whole playlist that will pop up right here in the card with my many, many ways to color with different mediums including digital so check that playlist out but today we're going to focus on inking so let's go so as you can see on my page i have a picture of a dog staring at something off the page and i'm going to use this sketch to show you guys how i ink my drawings so first things first i want to get most of the line work down so i gravitate towards my pentel sign pen and get most of the line work done with that this pen is my go-to supply when it comes to creating line work for my drawings because unlike a normal brush pen, the brush on this pen is quite small and because it's a brush, I can get a variety of different line widths while I'm drawing. Also, the line width I want to create is based on the pressure that I put on the pen and the way I'm holding it. For example, if I hold the pen on its side, then I can get a very bold line. If I hold the pen on its tip, then I can get a very thin and skinny line because, you know, it's a brush pen, so it's pointed at the tip. So yeah, since I can get a variety of different line widths, that's what makes this brush pen my go-to supply. But of course, there are some things that a brush pen can't do. There is going to be a time where I want a consistent line width when I draw, and it's also very possible for me to screw up a few lines while I'm using my Pentel sign pen. So that's why I gravitate towards my Pigma Micron pens and begin to create lines with a consistent line width. Now with Pigma Microns, I got a big set of fine liners. I think it's a 10 pack that came with lots of pens that give off different line widths like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 millimeters, and so on. Before I discovered my Pentel sign pen, I used to use these pens to ink my drawings. But now I use them to repair any messed up lines that I accidentally made using my brush pen. Because the brush pen can't do everything. Now I know I said I wasn't going to color anything in this video, but when it comes down to coloring something I know will be a solid black, I gravitate towards my Sharpies. Now the reason I don't use Sharpies to do my line work is because I mainly color with alcohol markers, and Sharpies are alcohol based. And the alcohol ink for my colored markers might end up mixing with my line work if it's done with Sharpies, and the aftermath just wouldn't look pretty. Now I can say if you're coloring with something other than alcohol markers, inking with Sharpies is fine. But going back to what I do with Sharpies, if I'm coloring a big, huge, large area with Sharpies, I don't just want to use a standard size Sharpie marker. I like to use what I call a big fat Sharpie because if my drawing has a big, huge, large area that I know will be a solid black, then a big fat Sharpie would be ideal to color a big, huge, large area. Now in this case, the dog's nose in my picture is not a big, huge, large area, but I can still use my big fat Sharpie to color it in. And if you're like me and doing this in a sketchbook, it's always great to finalize everything with help from my pencil and ruler. Alright, and there you go. That's how I ink my drawings. So, if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I got my nigga like